As many of you know, I was recently working on a recording project with a band called The Hooplas. As we are nearing the end of the project, their drummer, Alex Abraham, took his own life. I can't even explain how it's made me feel. I've spoken with his dad on the phone a few times. I obviously have spoken with the band a lot. The project is going to be done. I finished mixing it. It's going to come out. I had made some social media posts about this, and I've got this outpouring of friends and family and people from Vermont, where he was from, about him. And I felt like I just needed to put something out about him. I thought about not doing this, but he deserves to be recognized, and the work that he did needs to be heard. I have some footage from the recording sessions. He was very happy during them. I want to show some of that, but I also did an interview. Uh, <laughs> I, I did an interview with him, and I want to show that because it was a lot of fun, and it was a beginning of my relationship with him. I didn't know him very long. I only met him this year, but he was just incredible. And when I went down to Charleston to do additional recording, he was living there at the studio and I brought two of my sons and they hung out with him and they got really close to him. In fact, Alex called me dad. He loved me so much and we just we just clicked. I just want to say something about him before I play this. And that is in the music business, we work with a lot of talented people and artists. And artists can be a little weird. They're they're you know they're a little kooky sometimes. But there's this other breed of artists, and they're very rare. And you come across them only a handful of times in your life. There, Jimi Hendrix was like that. Um, Alex was one of those people. They're beyond talented. They're connected to something else, and they're magic. Like that that guy was just absolutely just he was a star and, and well, the bad part of that is that there's also messed up things in their head. You can only have so much talent. There's only so much energy that can go into all these really cool, positive things without some bad sides. And I guess some of that stuff overpowered him. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and play the video and some of the clips. I'm doing this to honor Alex and also to answer a lot of questions that people had about his final weeks here. It was amazing, and I think you should see it. So, here we go. All righty. So, start out saying your name and what you play. My name is Alex Abraham. I play drums as well as keyboard. I'm from Vermont, and uh, as a musician, not going to make much of a life out there, so I had to leave immediately. Luckily, I have a girlfriend who is kind enough to learn how to drive a school bus. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> Come on in. Nice. That's the cockpit. And this is the cock room. Nice. We live on a bus. This is Adam. He's a sleepy boy. And, uh, and yeah. It's a king size bed into a couch. It's real easy to make it into a bed. All you have to do oh, is that folds out. take the mattress, you have to move it over, you have to pull a bunch of legs out, you gotta flip the piece of wood over, you gotta put the mattress back on, you gotta take the pillows out of here, and extra blankets, because it's usually cold, and uh, real easy stuff. <laughs> that's my mother and my stepdad, Alan. <laughs> and uh, that's Britney Spears, huge fan. My mother painted this, brought that from home. I built this nice sturdy shelf. He's all there. Holds any clothing you got. Cool. It's my old best friend, also named Alex Abraham. <laughs> cool. And let me get behind you there. Please. And that spot back there is full of all the equipment from the studio, but uh, usually it's cleaned out and uh, I sort of put all my keyboards and water, uh, water heater, shower supplies, extra water, mostly water. <laughs> yes. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. God, Victoria, my boat. We call each other boat. And um, we uh, heading south trying to chase the nice weather. 
and she's driving the bus. She's the one helping me navigate through where would be a good place to go try to play some music. We were going to come to Asheville to try to just do busking on the street and uh, just play some music, but we were going through Charleston, had to do laundry. She asked this nice lady at the laundromat, um, where can we play some music around here? And Frank was right outside, and he happens to own this plot of land that the boys and the hoopla is all practice at. So then we end up going there for a night. I met Ben the next day. We all, they all came over the day after that. We all jammed. They wanted me to play a keyboard. They, then they wanted me to play their drum set, but I didn't want to because it wasn't my drum set, but they finally got me to. And then that's when they realized I'm a drummer. And then something happened with the drummer they had, and uh, then here we are. How long ago was that? That was about a month ago, a little over a month ago. And we were only on the road for about a month and a half before that. So we had just left, just kind of finding our bearings, staying in Walmart parking lots, no real direction. And then a month, month and a half in, met these guys. And, uh, and now I feel like I'm never gonna leave. That's cool. Asheville, man, I've heard so much about just Asheville and we had wanted to, t to take the bus to Asheville just to try doing some street performing and just try to, you know, anything, anything to play music anywhere. But we were terrified to take the bus out here aimlessly because we just, where are we ever gonna park? How would we ever find our way around? So we kind of hesitated on it. And then as it turns out, meeting these guys, they have this beautiful situation where they're coming to Asheville to record at Echo Mountain Studios and this place. I've never seen anything like it, and it's honestly kind of a dream come true just to come check this place out. The Hooplas are a high-energy rock band with, you know, the music is fantastic, but the people are even better, and it's just a, a band of brothers, and they are my new family. Ben is the first one I met, the bass player. He's so, so fun and goofy, and he laughs at almost everything I say, which I really appreciate, and I love that. Cody is the one that will listen, you know, whereas Ben and Adam listen, but, but they have a lot to say as well. Cody will, will sit and really listen to every word I say, and I appreciate that so, so much. And Adam has just got this energy and this mentality, the confidence that I need to the people around me to have to just know that we got this, and you put them all together. And you got a family, man. The recording sessions have been, you guys almost make it, I don't want to say you make it easy, but you make it very pleasant. The sessions are, all you can imagine, the first day or two. I was nervous, intimidated, and, uh, and just wanted to, to do well and, uh, and please everyone. And by the third day, I felt like I was home. It's like summer camp. First day is never fun. By the last day, you never want to leave. The kit that I, that I brought here is a, a hip gig senior I got from B Music, a music store in my hometown, from a good friend of mine, and they don't make them anymore. And uh, so I really do love that drum set, as simple as it is. It's just a little 18-inch Russian nesting doll of a drum set, and all the pieces go into it, and it's very easy to just kind of load around. But I didn't even bring all the pieces of it, and because uh, I honestly left here... Um, as a, as a solo artist doing uh, what I call ham-crafted and, and making, you know, beats and loops and, and learning to sing and rap and write and all these things I've never done before. And I basically put my drums away for two years before I got here because I was honestly done with being in a band. I was done with working with people until I met these guys and, and you see how kind they are, how genuine, driven, motivated they really are. And then I was like, it was a no-brainer. I'll do, I'll do drums, I'll do drums again. I have a lot of nice drum sets I wish I brought with me, but they're huge. My dad's set, he gave me a big, big Ludwig from the 70s, and a friend of mine who passed away, his another big, big Ludwig drum set. Couldn't have brought those with me, but there's a chance I might try to get them sent out here uh, in the future, because now that I've uh, found myself in maybe a career path with these guys, I wanna, I wanna put together my nice sets again. I mean, those are all my questions. Is there anything else that you want to say? Just nothing about a horse with a, with a strap. <laughs> it's a pig, for one thing. Dude, they're, they're pretty bad designs. It looks... <laughs> it's a pig. Oh, oh, I was thinking about the horse that you had that... Or the shirt you're wearing. Oh, that was so weird. I, I didn't look too close. It was kind of disturbing. Yeah, it's... <laughs> But is there anything else like the important that you feel like you want to say? Hmm. Um, 
I feel like I could I could just keep talking forever, but you know, <laughs> especially to you, I love talking to you, and um, but we'll we'll you know we'll keep this as as professional as as it needs to be. Oh, fucking professional. <laughs> Mm, I don't know what. I mean, I'm so cool, and there's so many cool things to say about myself. I just don't even know where to start. <laughs> Throwing it back, waking up again across town. Magic trick, rabbit in a hat, I'm back now. Abracadabra, Houdini, back with the new sound. The pieces fit, the puzzle just kind of click now. So cool. A couple of days into these sessions, I remember thinking. How could this guy be so good and so talented and I haven't heard about him? Nobody in the band's heard about him. I guess only people from Vermont know about him. Certainly he's not really from this little town in Vermont. He's actually a famous drummer who's been touring the world and he just wanted to take a vacation and just hang out and do a session with some cool dudes. <laughs> Alex had all sorts of unique parts and sounds and little things that he would do, but one of his favorite things to do was this. Here it comes. The bell. He loved hitting that thing. Oh, and he could also handle a yo-yo. This is from down at Soulshine Studios. Woo! Dang, boy! <laughs> Woo! Son, I'm so proud of you. Stay camping three years running! <laughs> The first time I remember seeing him was when I was unloading my gear at Echo Mountain and I turn and I see this dude walking up to me with these tattoos and chains and I'm thinking, what the hell is this? Alfred Hitchcock? Alfred Ball Hitchcock. But within seconds, I loved him. I shouldn't legally allow to be talking to strangers. And I just think he had that effect on everyone. I asked my friend Slade, who I'm working on music with back in Atlanta, to come up and watch us record for a day. He ended up staying for three and got a drum lesson from Alex. Oh, fuck you, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> This next interview was done by my son, Simon, when we went down to Soulshine Studios in Charleston after the Asheville sessions to do additional overdubs. I like this interview a lot. So, what's happening, man? Can you tell me an interesting story? I certainly can. I have so many interesting stories that it's too vague of a question. Ask, give me a subject. Something, something super memorable that you think changed your life. Oh man, how, how, how appropriate am I supposed to be with this? Do whatever you want. All right, well. <laughs> I've been telling this story a bunch of things, people have been asking. Um, something that changed my life is uh, when <laughs> in January or December, uh, New Year's Eve of 2019, I um, broke my dick. So. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, I uh, was an ex-girlfriend, not, 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 not Victoria that you know, she's fantastic. We had, had a run of three shows and we were very exhausted, we've been partying all weekend. And um, I'm just laying there, you know, and she's doing her thing and uh, comes out too far and breaks my dick. And then I have to play three more shows that week, so I was too afraid to go to the hospital because I was just terrified for what, whatever's happening. And so I didn't go to the hospital first. Played three more shows, double bass drumming, like just a lot, a lot, and uh, <laughs> and then and then I finally uh, uh, took a shower after the shows. I saw that it was turning black and blue, and it was absolutely terrifying to look at. And so I went to the hospital, and uh, they get me in, and the first doctor comes in, and he's like, "You should came here immediately, blah blah blah. You're you should you're gonna need surgery, all the shit." I'm like, "What? I'm terrified." And then he leaves, just leaves me with that. This other doctor comes in like 15 minutes later, the longest 15 minutes of my life. The other doctor comes in and he's like, okay, well, seems you broke your dick and uh, everything, everything, everything's gonna be okay, you're gonna be fine, just, just don't use it for a while, here's some antibiotics and it's all good. I'm like, well, who's this other doctor trying to cut my dick off? Like, what the fuck is that? And, uh, and so yeah, so that changed my life. That changed, I was terrified. I thought uh, that life was gonna be different 
and it wasn't, everything is fine and good, but uh, boy, does that make me think differently about how I approach life in, in certain manners nowadays, huh? That's crazy, but I could go on for days. You can ask me another subject, I'll tell you another story. Your favorite story? Man, that's a tough one. Honestly, man, I think a lot, a lot of, most of the stories I have from my past are like good lesson learned stories or, or coming of age stories, like crazy stories, things that are funny because of how up they are. I think my favorite story is happening right now. I think that's, and it sounds maybe corny, but I think it's true. I think my favorite story, because all I've ever wanted, my dream is to be a professional musician in, in whatever, you know, however I can. And, um, and I've never had shit for opportunity in Vermont. And, and, uh, and so I've always had the same dream since I was 10 years old, same dream, I want to be a famous musician. And, um, and I never had a chance, but my favorite story is it happening right now, meeting people like your dad, meeting people like Ben and, and Adam and all these, every human being I've met, and knowing that the point of meeting all these people is they're, they're, they love music and they're trying to help this whole musical journey. And I have no idea where this story is going, but I can already tell this is my favorite one, for sure. What's your favorite fictional story that you've ever heard, and why? My favorite fictional story? Hmm. Forrest Gump, a movie called Forrest Gump. And when I was a little kid, my mom used to watch a lot of old movies from the 90s something. And my mom used to watch it all the time. And I never really liked it when I was a kid because it was just really long and drawn out. But um, I always thought it was based on a true story. And then I found out later in life it absolutely was not. And, um, and so then I started watching a bunch and I always pretend like, it's a true story, because it's such an interesting story. It's just like, if you haven't seen the movie, it's hard to explain. But uh, me and my girlfriend call each other Boat from that movie, and he's like, this like, kind of simple guy, and like, is, jumps off his boat to say hi to his Lieutenant Dan, and his boat goes crashing into a dock behind him. He's like, it's my boat. And uh, so we just call each other Boat. And uh, Forrest Gump, everybody, in, most people in the world will know Forrest Gump if you bring it up to him. And uh, that is my favorite fictional story, for sure. And why is that? It reminds me of my childhood, and my mother, and, uh, and the simpler times when life wasn't so hectic and, uh, and I didn't have to, to wake up early and make my own food and make my own bed. You know, that, those joyous days. And uh, yeah, makes me think of childhood. What is a story you, you wish never happened? Probably got a handful of those. Um, that's a good one, man. Jesus. Story I wish never happened. You know, it's hard to say because I'm thinking what's going through my head is the worst, the worst of the worst things that have happened to me at a young age, getting into bad drugs, rolling with bad people, doing horrible things, destroying stuff, destroying myself, being mean to other people. What were you? We're doing a little interview. You want me to take that? Yeah, I need to dump it in that can over there. Go ahead. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thank you, brother. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate your help. Welcome, buddy. So, all these crazy things are going through my head, and 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 I want to say, it, my, and my first kind of instinct reaction would be to say that um, you know a lot of them, like I wish didn't happen. But then I have to think about it, and really. I can't say that there is, of all, even the worst of the worst things I've done, I can't say I would wish any of it to not have happened. Now that it's happened, and, and being what life has is, is become, and what I've learned, even the worst of the worst times, I think, had to happen. And, uh, and, I, and I think I'm grateful for all of them, I believe. There's probably a few things that I'm missing that, I, that really just shouldn't have happened or didn't have to happen. But I'm trying to think of all the major crazy things and they all had to happen, I think, for the most part. Bad things are good because you learn and you grow and then you don't do them again. Or sometimes you do them again, but then, then you don't do it again. <laughs> what do you think would be a cool story? I mean, so many, in like, in like, uh, like, like be a little more specific. Just like, an idea you have for a cool story. 
that you hope happens or that you hope somebody makes or does? Or I hope, I mean, not to sound conceited or, or full of myself, but I hope one day I can, um, I can tell the full story of, of my life's journey and, uh, and, and where it started and uh, about, about music or, about, or not, about just what I used to do with my spare time and, and with my house and my life back in Vermont. I would love that to become like a like a, a an autobiography or a movie or a documentary or something. And again, not to sound like a like a cocky, but it's been a really interesting life and uh, a lot of good, a lot of bad, and a lot of crazy, debaucherous partying. And um, and like I got party tattooed on my face. You know, you don't get party tattooed on your face because you want to party. You get a tattoo on your face because you partied. And um, and so I really hope, always have, for one day, to tell my story uh, in, its, in its entirety, from front to back, in depth as, as can be, and, and share that with the world. I think, I think, would be a good story. It's been interesting, to say the least. An autobiography is written by yourself, so. Yeah, maybe just a biography then. <laughs> I'll just tell the story, somebody else should write it. I would, it would take me 10 years. A good point. He's smarter than I am. I don't know a lot of words. <laughs> what is something you wish people would do more? Support. Support people. Support each other. Support music. Support ideas. Support passion. Support just somebody having a good day and being happy. Seems like a lot of times, if, if anyone's on on onto something, on a roll, just having a good day, whatever. People, they just all. Pick sides. They can never just hang out with a group of people. They always pick sides. Oh, yeah, Thank you so much, oh, man. Shit. Thanks. You were the man. Yeah. Yeah, dog. Unfortunately, I cannot find the footage for the rest of this interview, and that really bums me out because Alex talked about how he dressed like a pirate for so long when he lived in Vermont that people used to refer to him as the pirate. So that was that was six. Do you want to hear? I definitely. I mean, if you if you want, we can check out a couple other ones. But I mean, I do feel comfortable with that one. If you if you think that's solid. I'm so glad you guys liked that. Just sit on this. Of course we did. <laughs> I'd never met anybody like him in my life. I mean, he was supposed to come up here and record on my album, and we were going to go hiking, and I was going to introduce him to people in music that I knew up here. But, I mean, <clears throat> you just you just don't ever know what's, what's going to happen. I hope this answers the questions that people had about how he spent his final weeks here and what he was doing and all I know that it was it was great it was fun there was just all the the music and everything but there's also that day that my wife and I and my son Griffin took Alex and Victoria around Charleston for a, an, an afternoon and evening and it was literally one of the best days of my life I don't have anything else to say just uh, I love you Alex Put the ink to paper to show you A little love for the things that we go through Testify to the lies that I told you Leave it all in the past, wanna be brand new Love is a flower, it can die, it can grow again I need the touch of your body, that is my medicine When you feel like you hate me, you know I'm still your friend Love is a flower, it can die, it can grow again